Hey, Sloan says, how you doing? Hey, nice to meet you. You remind me of my daughter. Yeah, you do. And uh, so I want you to know it's, 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 it's really personal, meaning that we are here for our children. So I have a daughter of your age, and so we are concerned. So, but I want to talk to you about how the Most High is, okay? That he doesn't make any mistakes, all right? Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Uh-huh. Lo, lo, this only have I found. Listen, when we read the Bible, that's what we're reading. This is the only thing we're going to find concerning this matter. Read on. That God. That this matter is pertaining to God. Let's see what God is concerned about. Read. That God have made man. Hold, hold that right there. That God has made us. He made us a particular way. He didn't make us any kind of way, but he made us the way he made us. And the way he made us is that we have to perform what it is that or how he made us. I cannot become something that he did not make. That, that's, that's making a little sense to you? Okay, start from the top, read it from the beginning again. Verse 29. Uh-huh. Lo, this only have I found. This is what we'll find when we're dealing with God. Because with a surety, what God has done, he's been righteous, he's been just, and he does not make no mistakes. Read on. That God, that God, the matters pertaining to God, that's what this is about. He made us, not we ourselves, but God made us. Read on. Have made man upright. And he made man, he made us right. He knew what he was doing when he made us. He made us upright. Not to alter, not to change, but to, he made us upright. Read on. But they have sought out many inventions. Now, stop right there. Now it says, but they, meaning us, the people, sometimes want to do our own things. It doesn't mean that what God begun and done in the beginning wasn't wrong. It was right when he done it. But what we do sometimes, sis, as speaking to you like a daughter, you would be in a house and you say, um, for an example, it may be something um, that you might want to go to a particular event or something like that. I would say to you, I said, no, you know, I'd rather for you not to go because you don't have no supervision. But to you, you may think it's right that you do things in your own way. But your parent or your father is telling you you don't have proper supervision. So he's concerned for you, so he won't be willing to just let you go like that. So a father would look over his daughter during his, her time for something like that. So give me that, keeping that, uh, give me that in uh, Chirac, uh, keeping my daughter in straightly. So Rock, chapter 42, verse 8. What's your name again? I'm sorry, sis. What she, what she say, officer? Creature. Hey, good to meet you, Creature. Good to meet you. you. Look like you're going somewhere. You going somewhere? So this is not your home? Did you go to school out here? Okay, stay in school, sis. Stay in school, okay? Okay, all praises. But here we read a matter pertaining to a father having a relationship with his daughter on how he's how he should guide her. That's why I'm speaking to you because it's important that I get to say something to you that perhaps throughout the day that you may be able to glean something from what we all are saying to you. We all care about you, sis. So we want to make sure that we're saying something to you and it's coming from God. These are not our words. <laughs> Give me that 3, 7, uh, Ezekiel. These are not our words. We are not, these are not our words. You can't say uh, that's what they say. No, 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 no. This is, this is the Lord's book. Yes. So we're going to repeat what's already re been written for our people. Right. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto me. But God says that our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans sometimes don't listen to him. God said my people, which are you, me, and us with that's out here, God says sometimes we don't listen to him. Read on. For they will not hearken unto me. So God said that black people don't want to listen to what the Bible says. I just make it plain. And we don't want to do what God says. People want to do their own doggone thing. And those things that we do on our own is going to cause us to be put to death by God if we don't repent. That's what that goes into. It's just merely that way. Read on. For all the house of Israel, for all the people, the so-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans, read, are impudent. Are impudent. Read and hard-headed. And we have a hard head about us. You ain't never heard your mama say a hard head make a soft ass? You never heard that? Yes, I have too. I have too. I have too. So, 
Read on. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. But now we have a problem with our people because God is dealing with us to be able to come out here to deal with our people. Because we got to get in this word. Because our people are not listening to God. We got to talk to them and let them know they're going the wrong way. They have to get their mind right. They have to repent. Stop doing the wickedness that's going on in and around this country. We got to get ourselves together. Stop killing one another. There's a scripture in the Bible that said, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Do our people do those things here in this city? Do they not do them in this city? Yes, but God said, don't do it. So we can help ourselves. We can clean up our communities by listening to what God said for us to do. Read on. And thy, and thy forehead strong against their forehead. Read. As an abdomen harder than flint have I made thy forehead. But the point was in verse 7. I think it was... Um, Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3 uh -huh. and he said unto me son of man so he's telling us that we have to come out here Ezekiel is always elaborating on us having to come out here and deal with our people he's telling us that God is telling me to tell you go out there and deal with the so called blacks and Spanish Native Americans I need y'all to go out there where they are go out there to the sick coat go out there and teach them over there to the fast stop number 2 cause that's where my people are I want y'all to talk to them read I send thee to the children of Israel. I, I send you to the blacks, the Hispanic people, the Dominican people. I send you to those, to those. Read on. To a rebellious nation. What's wrong with our people? What did the Bible say wrong with us? Read that again. To a rebellious nation. What does rebellious mean? You in school, what does rebellious mean? Help me out, sister. Take your time. So give me an example. So let's let's go here. If um, you rebel, if you're told not to uh, eat something, or you're told not to uh, go to a particular place late at night, and you go, that's that's being rebellious. You agree? You get it now? Right, right, right. So so read that part again. I send thee to the children of Israel. Uh huh to a rebellious nation. So a lot of our people are doing the opposite from what God told them to do. And for that, God said we're, we're most rebellious. We're rebellious people, meaning that we won't listen to what it is that God is telling us to do. That's what we have to make our change at. We've been doing things so long on our own. We've been following the other nations so long on our own. We've been doing what other people have been doing, and we've been watching what television tell us to do so long we think it's okay to do what it is that we're doing. And it's not okay because we're going against God. You're going to serve two people. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. You're going to have a choice in the matter. And what we're trying to do is get our people to understand that they must follow God and the written word of the Most High God. That's all we're out here doing. We ain't got no other agenda but to let our people know that they must follow God in righteousness. Right? We don't. To a rebellious nation uh -huh. that have rebelled against me. Read. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. So sometimes we learn from our parents that our parents have been rebellious. Now here we come, we're being rebellious against God too. That we're not listening to what God tells us to do. So I pray, sis, I pray, sis, uh, what's the name again? Creature. 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 That, that things work out for you. We're glad that you're taking our time with us. But I do want you to know that we have to change as a people, right? So the brothers, I stood there and watched them. They, they all talked to, talked to you and had moments where they gave you understanding. You've been listening. All praises for that thing. All praises for that thing. Did they give her a flyer? Nobody, I don't yes, see sir, a, They gave her a flyer? Okay. All right. Now, where are you traveling to, sis? Which DC. DC? You know, we have another school in DC. We have a school in DC. So when you get to DC, let them know that you can attend our school in DC that you want to come visit. And that you can continue learning your history, learning what it is that you must do to repent and get yourself right. Give me that in the um, Acts, what is 319, what I want for, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because what's happening is that for me and all these brothers out here, sis, something that we all must do. And what it is is God is telling us that we must hearken to him. And God is not going to accept us any kind of way. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove that to you. Hold that and give me that uh, Hebrews 12 and 6. And so this is what I want you to understand. Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. Uh-huh. 
for whom the Lord loveth. So God loves you. That, there's no question about it. He chose you, right? So God loves you. Let's see why he loves you. Read on. He chastened it, but his love is going to come with correction. You understand me? If I'm your father, and I told you don't go out of the door after 11 o'clock. I'm going to correct you too. I love you. I don't want anything to happen to you. I'm not going to allow you to go to a place I told you not to go because there's no good supervision down there for you. I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm there that I can make sure I can watch over you. I'm going to keep you close to me. Make sure that nobody take advantage of you. But that's where they have to be sometimes. We have to check, check our children. We have to correct them. We have to chasten them. That's what we're doing. Chasing is just a way of correcting. And our people need to be corrected. We just read that our people don't, don't hearken to the Most High. We don't. And scorching every son whom he receiveth. So, have you ever got a whooping by one of your parents? Have you ever got a whooping from a parent? Oh, Lord, girl. That's, what they say. That's what's wrong. You ain't never had a whooping. <laughs> Sis, I'm telling you. For us, we all have been chastised. Sometimes the parents have to whoop you for what you do wrong, right? You understand the understanding, right? That a, a, a person does something wrong. Okay, let's, let's take a step back. Even this society, if you do something wrong and you take something that don't belong to you, they'll lock you up, right? That's the correction. That's the chastisement. Even for God, he got chastisement for me and you. That's thing he's going to correct us on. So we got to be able to receive the correction. We got to stop being hard-headed. We got to stop being hard-hearted. Stop doing the things our own way. I'm grown now. I can color my hair this way. I can wear what I want to wear. Oh, no. God don't have, he got a problem with all those things. I ain't going to have no kid come to my house and walk into my house 2 o'clock in the morning and, and walk into my house. I, let, I pay the bills there. You ain't going to be walking in and out of my house. You know what I'm saying? That's what a parent should do. You know what I mean? He should allow his daughter or son to come and go as they please. Read on. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening. Now, if my, daughter, my son or daughter endure the correction that I'm giving him, that they realize dad is looking out for me. Dad ain't got no, no reason to hate me. He want to make sure I'm in the house. He want to make sure I'm doing what's right. He makes sure I ain't going out being around the wrong people. Daddy care for me. He looking out for me. Read that again. If ye endure chastening. If you understand that a father have a love for your daughter, he has a love for his daughter, he care for her. Read. God dealeth with you as, as with son. Now you're going to be acting like you're a daughter of mine. Now you're acting like a real daughter. God is pleased with that thing. She's doing what her father say. She's listening to what her father tells her. She's doing what everything her mother tells her to do. She's not giving him a hard time. She's not being rebellious. Read. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? What son is he who, the, who God won't correct? What good are we if we just call ourselves the children of God and God don't correct not all of us? He has to correct us. He's trying to make us better. He's trying to make us to be what we are, which are the children of God. We don't, but if ye be without chastisement. Now, if you have a problem with what the Father is trying to tell you, if you have a problem with what God is trying to tell you, you don't want to listen, read. Well, all, all are partakers. Then, then what? Ye are bastards. Then you're a bastard. You ain't, no, you ain't no good for nothing. You ain't no good for nothing. That's what the old folks used to say. I'm telling you. So God is telling us that when we obey him, then we are righteous. Is that Ecclesiastes 12 and 1? Give me that. Shrock, it's Shrock 12 and 1. That's what I want. Yeah. But we love you. We love you, sis. Correction ain't bad. Correction is good. Correction is always love. We go back to that. I'm probably with children. Oh, that's 16. So Rock, chapter 16, Listen verse 1. Uh-huh. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. So what good is means to have the children that I have that's not listening to what their father say? I got children, right? None of them are listening to what I tell them to do. Re listen to what the Bible say. Read that again. Desire not. God a, said, don't even desire children like this. Read. A multitude of unprofitable children. He said, don't desire a multitude. Don't ask for say, Lord, give me three or four children. If the children ain't going to obey what you tell them to do, God said, don't even desire them. Read on, listen to what the Bible say. Neither delight an ungodly son. What good is a son that every time I turn around, he out there pitching dope to my people in my own community. He out there selling on the corner. God said, don't desire no son like that. He said, you don't need no son like that. He out there done got two girls pregnant in the neighborhood. God said, don't desire no son like that. 
You don't want no son like that. That ain't a good son to have. Read. Though they multiply, even though you have them, and they have children too, he might got a son out there that got two girls pregnant. Ain't taking care of now one. Read. Rejoice not in them. God said, don't be rejoicing them wicked ass kids. Read on. Except. Except what? The fear of the Lord be with them. Unless they listen to what God is saying. Those are the only two children you want. Only right. child you want is a child that's going to listen to God. You don't want that child that's not going to listen to God. But you do want that one that will listen to God. Other than that, don't desire no children. If you ain't going to raise them up right, if you're not living right yourself, you should want no children. You should want them to, be, to grow up to be, go against the will of God. That's a matter that you don't want. Is that all that? Trust not thou in their life. Uh-huh. Neither respect their multitude. Listen at this, sis, right? Hey, sis, you need to hear this part. Listen at this. Say, he said, read that part again. Trust not thou in their life. Don't be trusting in these kids that you got. You know they ain't living right. God said don't trust in them. Read on. Neither respect their multitude. Because they got two kids of their own, or they got a house, they got a good job. God said don't respect them. Read. For one that is just. If you have one kid that obey this Bible, it's better what? It's better than a thousand. One of these kids that do what God say is better than 1,000 children that won't do what God say. God say one. You just give me one. It's better than 1,000. You give me one that obey me, it's better than a woman, a woman having a 1,000 kids. A 1,000 children, so to speak. One is better than a 1,000. Is that it? And better it is to die without children. Now, he says it this way. If you can't have one good righteous child, this is what God said about having children. Read that again. And it is better to die without children. It's better to die without children. Read. Then to have them that are. Hold, hold right there. Go slow. God said it's better for you to die with no children as a woman. Read. Then. To have them than to have children, read, that are ungodly. That they don't do the will of God. They're wicked as the day is long. God says better not to have none at all. That's what God said. So every child that's on the earth is not of God. A lot of these kids are wicked. And that's what's going on in our community. We're selling drugs to our own people. I, we're sitting over there messing with kids 15 and 16 years old, impregnating them. They don't know. They're confused. Then they sit there and get in their mind. They go down to the local center, and then they put the baby to death. Bring it out! I'm telling you, that stuff is going on in our community, and God is not pleased. Right. So why are we out here? We out here for our people because we need our people to repent. Let's go back to where we were. That's 319 of Acts. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Here we go, sis. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So we just need to change. The word converted means to change, right? So changing sometimes, it takes on a different mindset. So for an example, that you have people that change from one job to the next, right? They'll go, they'll be at one location, then they'll take another job. That's a change, right? But they make that change because they say the second job is better for me. It's, it pays me more, it has better benefits, they do it because it's the betterment of them. So God is asking us to do the same thing. He's asking us to change for him. Give up right. some of the things that you are doing wrong and turn the things that you're doing wrong into the things that you can do right. So read that. Repent ye therefore. So repent means to just change. And be converted. And get yourself together. Read on. That your sins may be blotted out. Because what it is is that there's things that we're doing wrong and we don't want God to judge us. The officer just brought out. That, that when that time comes, there's going to be a judgment. And it's going to cause people their lives. Right. There's a true judgment that's coming to this place. This place is not going to be here forever. Christ is coming back here to bring this place down. Right. And the only people going to be ruling and reigning is those that obey God's will. Those are the only people that's going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. Right. Ain't nobody going to be, there ain't going to be no clubs. Ain't nobody going to be up in no clubs. That ain't going to be happening. Ain't nobody going to be lounging out. That ain't going to be happening. Ain't nobody gonna be going to no, it ain't gonna be no script club. All that's gonna be torn, torn down. Right. So let's be real about it. So we have to change. When he get back here, it's gonna be a different level. Read. When the times of refreshing shall come from the present, from the presence of the Lord. So when the Lord get back here, he gonna establish everything. Sitco ain't gonna have no sign there. Ain't gonna be Sitco. Sitco ain't gonna be manning up. There ain't gonna be no uh, KLCs. Ain't gonna be no cars. It ain't gonna be no cars here. This place gonna be shut down. All this what you see and got going on, this ain't gonna be this ain't gonna be here when the refreshing come. 
When the freshman come in, it's talking about everything's going to be all anew again. We're going to go back like it was. It's going to be better. Right. We're going to be ruling. We ain't going to be on the bottom. We're going to be on the top. That's right. So with that, I bid us alone. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.